Okay, so our first speaker tonight will be Dr. Giacomo Santangelo, and he teaches all over New York City, and he's an economist that Fordham is proud to call their own, and his talk is called Disney, a Ganymedian Toy Story. Give it up for Dr. Giacomo Santangelo. Just wanted to make sure I wasn't still wearing that outfit. <coughs> so, <clears throat> uh, tonight I decided I wanted to talk about Disney, because I love Disney. Who doesn't love Disney? Don't answer that. Um, <clears throat> the mouse might be listening. The, the concept of economics, which I have been teaching for decades now, is, is really an observational science. I've always looked at economics. It is an observational science. In the absence of observations, we really have nothing to talk about. And the interesting thing about education is that we share so much in common, especially today, specifically today. We share so much in common, and yet we focus on our differences, and I think that's wrong. So something that we share is our love of Disney. So tonight, I'm going to ruin that for you. <clears throat> um, button. Zeus looked down from the mighty heavens. Sorry, Zeus looked down from the mighty heavens and saw in a field a shepherd named Ganymede. And he said, oh yeah. And sent down an eagle or transformed himself into an eagle to go down and snatch Ganymede up to bring him to Mount Olympus and make him the cupbearer to the gods, to make him immortal. That was Ganymede, right? And, you know, you look this stuff up and you read about stuff. It's 2016, you wiki it. And you see that this is a brilliant mythological story that is not all that different from the vision that Walt Disney had and what Walt Disney did to us. And no, I'm not referring to what Zeus did to Ganymede. I'm referring to what Disney offers us, what Walt Disney offers us. Now, Zeus offered Ganymede immortality. When we refer to the Zodiac and we talk about Aquarius, the water bearer, that's Ganymede. When we talk about the largest moon of Jupiter, the Roman version of Zeus, it is named Ganymede. And that's important because that is the immortality that Zeus gave. That was the promise that Zeus made to a young boy just minding his own business, tending his sheep in Greece. Walt Disney had a vision. And one of the things that bothered him was that we all grow up. Well, almost everyone grows up. And in that, he said, you know what? I want to offer people something. And when he made his films, starting in 1937, when he decided to make his theme park, what was it that he was offering us? He turned to us and he offered the people of the Earth immortality. He offered us the ability to stay young forever. And depending on your familiarity with mythology, with Greek mythology, there's a difference between immortality and eternal youth. And the thing that Zeus offered us was both. He built two parks such that every person who steps foot into either the land or the world is young again. And that's something significant. But that's what he did physically. I want to talk about something else. I want to talk not about Ganymede the planet. I want to talk about something that happened in another galaxy. I want to talk about what happened in 1959 in Galaxy Magazine when the, the visionary science fiction writer Philip K. Dick wrote a short story called War Game about what happened when a war breaks out between the people of Earth and the people who live on the largest moon of Jupiter, Ganymede. The story begins 
when a, a company on Earth like Homeland Security is concerned at the toys that are being shipped to Earth from Ganymede because they're concerned that the toys, which are meant for the children, are going to in some way subvert the minds of the children. And there are three toys that this short story is concerned with. War toys, virtual reality suits, and a monopoly-like board game. And the insidious plot of the people of Ganymede is there is nothing wrong with the war toys. There is nothing wrong with the virtual reality suit. It's the Monopoly game. Because all of the adults in the story believe it's just a Monopoly game, but only the children read the directions. And the actual purpose of the game is to send the message to the children to get them accustomed from an early age of living a life where they just give everything away, such that when the day comes that the people from Ganymede arrive, they can just take the planet because the people are just going to give it to them because that's what they're accustomed to. What was Walt Disney trying to tell us? What was the lesson that Walt Disney was trying to give us? Was he just giving us immortality? Was he just giving us eternal youth? No, because he was making movies and there was a message there. And he made 50, there have been 55 animated Disney films. And I know there are 55 Disney animated films because I watched all of them this weekend. <laughs> and in doing so, I noticed something. There are 55 Disney animated films, but they're all exactly the same movie, except for one. Now, when you sit down to watch a movie, you tend to notice what's going on. So when we start with the very first Disney film, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, that was released in 1937, everybody remembers The Poison Apple. Everybody remembers love, True Love's Kiss. Everybody remembers that love will conquer all. What movie were you watching? This is a movie about how vanity will take people who are beautiful and turn them ugly inside and out. Because everything that happens in this movie happens because a woman stands in front of a mirror. It's the first scene in the movie and says, am I beautiful? And the mirror says, meh. There is somebody who's hotter than you. And in her quest to be hotter than hot, she turns into that. Now, I'm not being judgmental, but that. <laughs> she has a wily coyote death. She doesn't fall off a cliff. She falls off a cliff and they drop a rock on her. That's what vanity does. So don't be vain, kids. But then, this movie won so many awards. It won an Academy Award. It actually won eight Academy Awards. They weren't giving out Academy Awards for animation. It won an Academy Award for being awesome, and then seven little ones, because the Motion Picture Academy has a sense of humor. Now, that was the first Disney movie. There are 54 more, but don't worry. I'm only going to talk about the other one. Because the other 54 movies are all Pinocchio. Walt Disney has made Pinocchio 54 times. And you pay more every time you go see it. You love it every single time. When you think of a Disney movie, you think of a person wishing on a star. That was Geppetto. You think of the wish coming true. It was Geppetto's wish. Now, here's the interesting thing about Geppetto. Pinocchio is a wooden puppet who is not real. And when Geppetto makes a wish, please, a god, make a meal real a boy. That's all he says. I just a wish. Wouldn't it be great? Crazy old man talking to his cat and his goldfish says, wouldn't it be wonderful if Pinocchio were a real boy? So he makes a wish, the blue fairy comes and says, Geppetto is such a good man, I'm going to grant your wish. And, he makes, and she makes Pinocchio come alive, but does not make him a real boy. She gives him the three rules to being real. She says, in order for you to be real, you have to be honest, Specifically, she says truthful. You have to be brave, and you have to be unselfish. And Pinocchio is none of those things. 
He turns into a donkey. He gets Geppetto lost. When Geppetto goes out looking for him, Geppetto ends up in the belly of a whale. And in this scene, he's about to die. And the last thing he says, the last thing he says is, Pinocchio, he's not such a bad boy. He's a good boy. I love him. And that's what every Disney movie is about. That's the message that Disney is sending. Disney is telling you that you need to be real, boys and girls. You need to be real. And in order to be real, you have to be brave. Because Pinocchio is brave by the end of the film when he saves Geppetto. Pinocchio is truthful because he tells him the truth at the end. Pinocchio is unselfish because he puts his life on the line to save his father. And that's the lesson of Pinocchio. That's the lesson of the Sorcerer's Apprentice in Fantasia. Don't put your father's hat on. Your father told you to leave your hat alone. And what happens? Mickey is punished. Specifically, he isn't it beats the crap out of him with a broom. But we're not going to think about that right now. All Disney movies, we talk about the Disney dream. OK, let's talk about the Disney dream. All Disney protagonists have a dream. They apparently all want to be loved. The only reason Pinocchio has to do anything is because he wants his father's love. He wants Geppetto to love him. OK, that's what all the Disney protagonists want. Now, some of you are thinking, but wait a minute. Disney's famous for killing the mother off in the beginning of the movie. Since Bambi, that's true. Well, in the middle of the movie. But the issue is this. Disney made a mother's love the unconditional one. Disney turned around and said, well, you know, that scene at the end where Geppetto's sitting in the belly of the whale and he's about to die, and he says, you know what, I love my, my crappy son even though he's all these awful things, he's really not so bad. Pinocchio's quest is to deserve that love. That's the whole point. Because when else do we talk about fathers? Actually talk about them. Ariel has a father, kind of. Tiana has a father who gave her her dream. She wants to deserve that legacy. She wants to earn that legacy. Wendy actually sings a song in Peter Pan to solidify what the word mother means. Why is it important? Why is a mother an important thing? And the children, not her brothers, but the actual lost boys turn around and go, I think I had a mother once. I think I identify with that feeling that you're describing of love. Because that's the quest. And in order to deserve it, there are three things that you need to do. So how do you win? Oh, wait, I'm sorry. How do you become worthy of your dream? Be real. Genie actually tells Aladdin, be yourself. Because Aladdin says, what's his one wish? I want the girl. And Genie says, I can't give you the girl. However, you should be yourself. No, Genie, I want you to make me a prince. But that's not who you are. So you're not going to win as long as you're not you. So when does Aladdin win? Not when he's Prince of Ubu. No. He wins when he's a street rat, when she sees him for who he is. When the, the people see that he's actually not a prince, that's when he wins. You have to be brave. You have to be truthful. You have to be unselfish. It is only after that happens in the movie that we get any resolution. It's the only time we ever find our dream. For example, Flynn Rider, the hero of Tangle. No, it's not Rapunzel. The movie's not called Rapunzel. It's called Tangle. So Flynn Rider is an orphan. Eh? No parents. He's a coward. He's a liar and he's selfish. But you know who's awesome? Eugene Fitzherbert. Because he gets his dream. Because he tells Rapunzel who he is. He bravely comes to a rescue when Flynn Rider would have run away. And he unselfishly sacrifices himself. Literally, he dies so that she can be free. Yeah, no, he's cool. I like him. This works in every Disney movie. Yes, we all think it's awesome that Mulan puts on the, the armor and pretends to be a dude to go fight the, the Huns, but she, don't, she doesn't beat them. Right? She doesn't beat them in armor. Mulan, a girl, 
beats him. That's what happens. She has to be herself. Rather than pretending to be someone you're not, be a kick-ass woman. This works in every Disney movie. Four arms, no parents, lost. Six arms, Ohana, family. Every movie, be yourself. Yes, it's true, you've been cursed since you were 10 years old. But what was the curse? He was turned into a beast. And he kind of became awful as a result. Because no one's going to blame a 10-year-old kid for not letting a stranger in the house. Don't let a stranger in your house. That, no one is saying that. But he becomes physically furry and becomes really mean. It's when he becomes truthful, unselfish, brave. That's when he turns back into the less desirable looking person. Let's be realistic. When they decided to make all the sequels, in the park, you can't go hang out with the prince. You go hang out with the furry dude. Without exception, this is in every single movie. All of them. Every last one of them. Conceal, don't feel. What are you talking about? Have you never seen a Disney movie? Be honest. You have magical powers. You can freeze stuff. And apparently resurrect the dead. Not so bad. So, what I think we take away from this is clearly, we like Pinocchio. Clearly, this is a movie we embrace. Disney's made a new movie, Moana. I wonder what it's about. Wait, I think I know. I bet by the end of the film, Moana is brave, truthful, and unselfish. So what is the message that Walt Disney was trying to give us that entire time that he was alive between 1937 and his death while making The Jungle Book. Well, I think it's pretty clear you shouldn't be vain, but oh wait, I got a better idea. Be nice. Be brave, be honest, be unselfish, and accidentally through every single one of those movies that we have loved, that we have embraced, that we have watched apparently 54 times, that I watched 54 times. That is the Ganymedean message that Walt Disney has given to us in exchange for the wonder and the glory and the power of eternal youth. We just have to be nice. And I think in 2016, Day, I think that's an important thing to remember. We should be truthful. That's a lesson to teach the kids. That's a lesson to teach each other. We should be unselfish. And most of all, we should be brave. Thank you.